a video on clarifying stock. So, I've made some uh, chicken stock and it's a bit murky and it's a little bit greasy. So, uh, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some egg whites to clarify it, which will uh, take some of the murkiness away. Uh, hopefully, it'll make it crystal clear uh, and it'll take away some of the greasiness as well. Um, so, clarifying stocks is quite straightforward. What we're going to use is we're going to use egg whites and what you normally use is if it's a like a beef consomme you would use minced beef and you would use some vegetables and you would mix the egg whites in with the vegetables and the meat and then uh, put that in the stock and what happens is as you heat the stock it forms a raft which rises to the top of the stock clarifying the stock as it rises to the top and as you boil uh, the stock well you bring it up to the boil and then you slow the simmer and uh, so it claps, catches all the impurities um, so, but I think using mince or any kind of meat, so if it's, it's chicken stock, so I'd use chicken, I think that chicken mince, I think it's, it just seems a little bit um, expensive. So we're just going to use onions instead and see how it works. It should work uh, because you can make um, a tomato consomme and you clarify it with uh, pureed up tomatoes and egg whites. So I can't see why just using stew cooked onions uh, won't work. So, about 2 litres of stock, 500 grams of cooked onions, uh, I haven't sorted them in oil because we're wanting to get rid of a greasiness, so there's no point adding something that's got an oil in it, so I've just dry cooked them in a little bit of water, dry cooked them in a little bit of water, but um, just to kind of steam them cooked because we want to take away that raw onion flavour, we don't want raw onion flavour going into the stock, so we've cooked them, and then we've got 4 egg whites and we're going to puree that together. So the recipe is basically 250 grams with onions and two egg whites per litre of stock. But we're doing two litres of stock, so we've doubled the recipe. So and we just need to, we'll put a heat under that just to start it going, because I'm going to run the, I'm going to run the video uh, from start to finish. I'll put some date stamps, I'll put some time stamps in it, so uh, you don't kind of have to, you can fast forward to the bit where the raft uh, forms and it's clear stock. Um, but I want to do it uh, the whole video the whole length so it'll be about 15 20 minute video or something like that uh, with me waffling I really should shut up and crack on with it <laughs> pureed and egg whites are mixed in um, I couldn't tell you the signs behind the, how this how this and why this works it's got something to do with the uh, impurities sticking to the proteins in the egg so and I need that as well so onions and egg into the pan and stir it in and then medium heat to bring it up to the boil you've got to be careful with stocks um, because they are certainly the meat based ones um, because of the time that they take to heat up and cool and you, the time you cook, take to cool them down um, they can uh, grow bacteria uh, which will send them turn the stock off uh, but also um, give you food poisoning if you if you if you're not eating and cooling stocks down up uh, quickly then you run the risk of giving yourself food poisoning. So, here we go. This is going to be a bit boring if I'm if I'm honest, um, but I think it's kind of important uh, that you kind of see the stages of how this kind of works. Um, do, 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 do. No, I think I covered everything. I think that's it. Yeah. So hopefully, it will it it will clarify the stock. I've, I've, it's a while since I've done it and the last time I did it, it was I was making a uh, tomato consomme um, where you make a um, kind of like a, a tomato stock and then uh, using whole tomatoes and puring it down 
and then you add uh, egg whites with cold you add egg whites and, and puree them in with more tomatoes and then it forms a raft and it clarifies makes the makes the tomato stock uh, which can turn into a um, consomme crystal clear extremely crystal clear it's quite an old method of making um, sorry I'm gonna do a bit of washing up while I'm doing this I'm not gonna waste any time just standing here not doing anything uh, yeah, so it, it, when you're making the tomato stock, it makes a crystal clear uh, stock. Um, so, and it's a while since I've done it with, with a meat stock, uh, so I can't just quite remember if it makes it as crystal clear as a tomato stock would. Um, clarifying a tomato stock into a tomato consomme using egg whites is quite a, it's an old method now. Um, so if I was to make a tomato consomme these days, I've actually made a video on it, it's somewhere, um, I've, I'm sure I've posted it, yeah I have posted it, um, and what, you, what I do is I would peel the tomatoes, no I don't even need to, you don't even need to do that, you uh, deceive the tomatoes and take the, like the pit out, the centre of the tomatoes, and then you uh, puree it, freeze it, and then you defrost it in a muslin bag, and all the the liquid comes out of the pulp and uh, obviously with a container underneath and you're left with this crystal clear liquid uh, and with none of the pulp passing through the bag because you're, you're basically breaking down uh, the uh, it's not malt you're not breaking down the water molecule because you can't that's not something you do but you you break down um, the thing that holds the tomato together and re releases all the water and flavor out of them so that's the that's why i do it these days I wouldn't uh, tap around with, with egg whites. Uh, and you also get a much cleaner uh, tasting stock, stroke consomme, because you're not cooking it. You're just pureeing up the, the uh, raw tomatoes. So I don't need that anymore. I can go out of the way. So as you'll see, as the stock heats up, the eggs will cook and it'll change color. So it's like a, a gray, uh, like a, what color is that? Like a off white color at the moment. And we'll see around the edges where the egg whites are that they will it's already started there that the egg whites will cook and it will form a raft um, stroke crust uh, if you're it's difficult to kind of explain it without actually seeing it and I suppose that's why I'm, I'm showing it um, but if you think of what's going to happen is the egg whites are going to form like a pancake which or omelette type of thing on the top which is going to catch all the impurities in the stock and make it nice and clear well, or clearer, I don't think it's going to be crystal clear uh, and it will certainly take away that, that kind of greasy flavour um, I think I must have not kept my eye on the stock long enough and what happened was that the stock boiled in, boiled a bit too much and then all the impurities and all the fat boiled itself back into the liquid of the stock which caused it to be uh, greasy and a little bit cloudy uh, which is kind of difficult with stocks but it goes to show that when things go wrong you can do things to um, correct them well most things you can't fix burnt toast stock's a little bit cloudy or a little bit greasy there's things you can do to sort it out it's all right there was nothing wrong with the stock it just tasted just a little bit greasy um when i tasted it so it just needed i just needed it i wasn't happy with it and uh, it played on my mind so I, i'm sorting it out so hopefully this is going to work it's a while it's a while i keep saying that I'm also just curious if we can actually get this to work then um, it's slightly out of interest to me as well so if, if I know that I can I can do something like this then potentially I could use it um, for something else in the future like, like certain stock, stocks tend to be um, quite powerful 
in, in, in smell and taste and they can be a little bit greasy so um, things like uh, lamb stock or mutton stock um, can be well mutton stock in uh, particularly can be a bit strong in flavour and can be quite greasy and in the same with uh, pork stock you don't tend to make a pork stock in a kitchen uh, because they're, they're not particularly as nice in, in flavour as a chicken or a duck or a beef or a veal stock but I'm also kind of curious that if you have got some pork stock by clarifying it will it take some of that um, not particularly nice flavour away from it uh, like you couldn't like a, with a lot of stocks you reduce them so um, to make to intensify flavour you, you reduce things um, so you normally uh, would reduce the chicken stock reduce uh, a, a meat stock so it becomes more intensely flavoured but if the stock that you that you that you've got already is kind of not particularly nice tasting like a pork stock it's not very nice tasting um, if I'm honest um, and, and I don't I don't want to get into that because I'm, I'm going off on a tangent already um, so uh, even if you were to make a pork stock uh, by you couldn't reduce it down because then you would intensify the flavour, uh, intensify the not particularly nice flavour. Um, uh, it's uh, what's the best way to describe it? I think, I think, I think it's probably because um, pigs eat absolutely anything. So, um, like a pig would eat meat uh, a cow doesn't a, ch a chicken well no a chicken does um, but they're not particularly old so like a, a cow doesn't eat um, meat but a pig would and I think the, the flavour profiles have kind of reflected it's a bit of a like a like a wet dog kind of flavour and smell that you get with uh, a pig stock if 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 I'm honest, that's kind of what I think it is. Like a wild boar, if the the difference between uh, pork and pig is uh, and wild boar, I think pig stock tastes more like wild. It's got a bit of a wild boar vibe to it, which I don't think is particularly nice if we're if we're going to be using it in in other kinds of dishes. I don't think you want something that intensely flavoured. So right, as you can see. The raft has started to form there. That's probably because I haven't got the pan just quite over the stove. And what we want is we want that white all the way over the pan. So we'll see how we go. So it's just a case of now that we just need to turn it down a tad because we don't want to bake, break uh, the crust, um, the raft, the omelette, the pancake that it's that it's kind of formed on the top because we don't the 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 impurities that we've filtered out of the stock into the raft we don't want to boil those back in again because that therefore it kind of uh, nullifies the purpose of what we're doing this for in the first place so we just need to bring it up to a temperature uh, to a safe temperature that's killed any kind of bacteria and also this, we've got raw egg in here as well uh, so we're going to want to make sure that everything's uh, hot and up to temperature because we don't want uh, bacteria growing turning our stock sour or poisoning us, you know what I mean? Um, so it's just a case of bringing it up to a temperature, making sure that everything's hot. It doesn't have to boil to kill bacteria. Uh, it needs to be over 80, 85 degrees. Um, so yeah, um, but you don't need to eat, uh, certainly in the UK, you don't need to worry about eggs anymore because all the chickens are inoc inoculated against salmonella, uh, something that happened in the late 80s. Uh, the decision was made to inoculate all chickens uh, in this country and any chickens that would be then um, uh, bred in this country they would be inoculated against um, salmonella so and that's the one thing that was that was causing lots of problems with people getting food poisoning through uh, through eggs that weren't particularly cooked properly or you, you couldn't eat uh, raw eggs in this country but they are perfectly safe now well perfectly safe as, as perfectly safe as things go Right, so we'll just turn it up a little bit.
what I'll probably do is the uh, oh, the raft will form around the outside first and then there might be a danger of the centre being still kind of quite a little bit raw so we might put a lid on it that's what we didn't want so we don't want that to do that there um, the pan's probably not particularly good pan it's quite a thick bottom pan but there might be hot spots in the pan whereas certain places in the pan heat up quicker than others uh, so that might be where a hotspot is but you can see it's starting to crack there as well uh, so it wants to start bubbling there and there and there we'll see you'll see the kind of cracks forming so the stock will want to boil boil, boil through which isn't too much of a problem as long as it's not like a rapid boil so it's just wanting to push through there i just need to keep an eye on that so we can turn it down now that's kind of that's okay is that that's fine so we kind of want it to be that white all over the top so it's starting over there as well nice and cooked there um there is a danger um when you're clarifying uh, your stocks and things uh, that it takes on a, a bit of the eggy kind, eggy kind of tell uh, taste uh, so that's not something particularly want to go something that didn't it was it was okay um when we used to clear clarify a, a tomato consomme um with egg in the past um because it didn't you you wouldn't just be uh, using the uh, eating the tomato consomme just plain you would have other things in it so there would be herbs and and maybe uh, some bits of pasta in so that would kind of mask the flavor of egg so that didn't particularly matter um, as much but it's one of those things where if you if you knew um, about a flavor once you knew what a flavor would taste like in like a soup if it had been clarified if you, you'd be able to taste that the egg was there uh, that's just something that like a trained palate no one's no one's got a particularly better palate than anyone else but when you get used to things and knowing what things taste like uh, when the uh, when there's too much egg in uh, to being clarified then you kind of it's difficult to kind of get away from it so we'll just try and turn it up a little bit more I don't know normally I don't like the idea of throwing things away but there's not much that you can do with this raft once you've once you've once you've kind of like sieved it off um, feed it to the dog the dog would like it it's not it's all right to eat I've tried it in the past out of curiosity um, but it's not anything sensational if I suppose if I was if I was desperate and I was hungry I'd eat it if money was really tight I'd eat it but um, it's certainly not like an amazingly tasting thing that I would say that we can we can turn we can turn it into something else which I normally do you know I mean if you watched any of my videos there's I really don't like waste and if we can turn something into something else I think it's brilliant I, I was reminded of something the other day actually that I, I need to make a video on about about waste and something that we can get for nothing actually well there's a few things that we can do for nothing I made some nettle soup last year and it's delicious. So when the nettles start coming through, we'll go out and pick some nettles and we'll make some nettle soup. That's lovely, is that? It's surprising how nice it is. Uh, and something that you can go and pick for free as well. And then we'll make a, uh, a stock out of vegetable peelings as well. That's another good one. From waste, we can turn, uh, we, can, we can get something decent from waste. Right, I don't think I want to boil that anymore. You can touch it on the sides, but it's hot. But I'm just concerned about this area here just not being the egg in there just being cooked. Just slightly worrying. So turn it down. Turn it off. And I might put the lid on. I'll put the lid on for a few minutes and then it'll steam. It won't turn the stock cloudy underneath. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll have a look at the stock underneath. Let's have a look at the stock underneath. Let's see how we go. That looks nice and clear. Oh, it looks lovely and clear. Yeah, it looks lovely and clear. Yeah, we'll risk it for a biscuit. If I can find the lid. So, 
we'll turn the heat off and then in the res residual heat in the stock what will happen is um, the top will cook I'm just slightly concerned about the egg I want it to be perfectly cooked perfectly cooked I want the egg to be cooked in the center so we'll put the lid on we'll leave it for five minutes and then we'll come back and then we'll strain the stock so as we can see how long were we at with minutes yeah 20 minutes 20 minute video sorry I'll put some timestamps in and uh, and it'll be right right so just had a few minutes just to steam the top of that so we know it's now cooked um, I don't want raw egg so we just need to carefully break here get rid of that over there and I need to scoop out some of this stock that's underneath so oh yeah so muslin cloth it's it's stained it's not dirty it's just one of the muslin cloths that I use for anything and everything really useful thing to have in the house um, and it's over a bowl and it's uh, there's, there's a strainer just sitting on top so it keeps the you can see just keeps it in place there and then we're going to pass the stock through it it's lovely and clear actually so we have a success the egg and the onion is going to get caught in the muslin cloth so no worry you just have to be gentle with it certainly couldn't tip the pan up and pour it through that wouldn't work we're going to lose a little bit of flavor with the stock because we're going to get rid of that greasiness and the cloudiness we're also going to lose a bit of flavor as well because what happens is that the onions and the egg whites are going to take away some of the flavor they're going to absorb some of the flavor um, from the stock so we lose a little bit of flavor but we get this lovely clear golden stock I mean uh, about 25 peas worth of onions four eggs nine pence an egg uh, 28 p so we're talking 80, 80 pence 75 80 pence to clarify two liters of stock which it's expensive it wasn't important to do this to do this the stock was fine without doing this I certainly would have used it for something else but just curious and also if you ever want to clarify a stock this is how you do it it's a very chefy thing to do and it's quite an um, an old-fashioned thing to do uh, making consommes it's certainly the time of the scoffier type of thing but just interesting nonetheless things have a habit of coming back in fashion so it's not crystal clear stock but it's certainly a lot clearer than it was what we'll do is I'll put once I've poured it through this and put it in a container I'll pour it into a container and let it set overnight and then you can kind of see the difference of how murky it was we'll put it back in the same container so then you'll be able to see how much clearer it is right yeah pour that in this time now gently gently sorry if it's steaming up the camera I'm not that sorry stock in there and a little bit of egg so we'll just have that out there's no point putting that into the washing up with that egg in there it'll just make a mess of the washing up water and won't get clean so that away. and then gently gently lift this you can leave this to drain and more other stock will, will come through it it's just caught there We'll just move it onto this jug out of the way. As you can 
can see there that's a lot no you can't because it's just all clouded up but it's a lot clearer there it was a lot lot clearer yeah look oh well, maybe it's not maybe it's just because it's in a uh, bigger bowl but that looks a lot clearer to me yeah it is i can see the i almost see the bottom of the bowl so i will um let that cool down a bit and then we'll pour it back into the container that i originally had it in the glass jar and then we'll have a look at it uh when it's when it's uh when it's gone cold uh overnight because obviously uh the opaque things are a little bit more op opaque uh, if they are if they are hot so we'll see what it looks like when it's cold and then we'll definitely know that it's worked uh, but it certainly looks a lot to me it looks a lot clearer but we'll see what it's like in the morning when it's when it's cooled and, and i've put it into the container and it's set uh, like a jelly overnight also it will also because of the uh, egg whites and the and the onion as well it will have lost a little gel uh, gelatinous it won't be uh, jellified as well uh, unfortunately i quite like jellied stocks but anyway but there we go uh, that's how you clarify a meat stock cheaply because we didn't use any meat right so the stock has set overnight it's gone nice and jellified um it's difficult to kind of see that it's that it's that it's uh it's clearer and not as murky uh if i'm honest uh it doesn't really look how can you really tell when it's on camera it is it's a lot clearer uh, and it's certainly uh, got rid of that uh, greasy taste uh, that it has sorry i'm just um, so uh, let's see if we can move the camera and we'll, we'll try and shine a light through it. I've got some other stock uh, from the same batch that was a little bit murky as well. Um, well it was, they're both murky. But I, I cleared, I clarified that one, I didn't clarify that one. Uh, so I'll, I'll, we'll move the camera, I'll pause, we'll move the camera and I'll put the light behind it and then we might be able to see uh, the kind of difference. This, obviously this container is a lot thicker than that one and you'll kind of see that they're, they come out of the fridge with a little bit. I'll move the camera, we'll have a look. It's still kind of difficult to see from, from this angle. Uh, let me just get some of the condensation. See that one's that one's brighter. Whereas that one that one just looks brighter. Certainly if you see around the top there, you probably can't. I don't think it's gonna really pick it up. Uh, let's get a light behind it. We'll get the light behind it and then we'll kind of see if maybe that kind of makes a difference. So if you look at the, the amount of light that's shining through that one uh, and that's a uh, not as deep a container and then you look at that one and it's certainly a lot brighter for even though it's thicker see just slightly so it has worked it's taken the grease enough gre grease enough grease enough greasiness away as well um, so that's how you clarify stock a uh, meat stock without having to use uh, meat uh, and just use egg whites and vegetables um, I'm kind of curious next time I make some stock um, we'll have a go at um, using some meat and some egg whites and we'll see what happens with that because I'm kind of curious um, does the meat help to clarify even more uh, we'll have a see but it certainly worked so if, if your stock gets ruined and you ruin your stock and you're kind of kicking yourself uh, because you've, you've wasted uh, some time and some hard work things are salvageable you know there's certainly things that you can do to save things so anyway that is a lesson on clarifying stocks maybe that's a better view I'm going to cook some cannellini beans and I'm going to use this stock so as you can see there you can see the spoon and the shine from the spoon underneath the stock so that's really kind of works so can you see my fingers yeah so you can just see my fingers through the stocks that's cleared that stock up a lot uh, you certainly wouldn't have seen uh, it wouldn't have been as bright as that um, yesterday before I clarified it so uh, and we'll walk my I'll tell you what we'll do um, I'm gonna cook these cannellini beans so just as the stock melts uh, we'll see what that looks as well what the stock looks like just as it melted as well because we saw that um, you certainly wouldn't be able to see the, the bottom of the pan yesterday uh, when we heated the stock up in this pan so I'll, I'll just heat up the stock just enough so it melts and then we'll be able to see then as well so I'll pause and I'll right I've just melted it enough so you can see it's still a little bit gelatinous 
because uh, I'm in a rush to get other things done. So as you can see, that's a lot clearer than it was. It was really kind of quite murky uh, yesterday. And that looks really clear now. Not really, really, really clear. Not as clear as water, um, but certainly a lot clearer. Uh, and it's taken on maybe the meat in when you clarify a uh, meat stock, uh, when you put some mince through it, uh, maybe that's for, there for flavour. So you don't kind of, because you obviously you lo uh, you, I've lost some flavour from that because the onions and the egg soap took some of that flavour, as well as the greasiness. So maybe the meat and the vegetables that you normally use to clarify a stock uh, are there to put flavour back into the stock. But anyway, you can see. That's rather quite clear. It's certainly a lot less murky. But anyway, there you go. As before, that's how you clarify a meat stock, if you ever need to, if you're interested. There you go.